Hey everyone, today we are going to finally take a look at the live action remake of Disney's Mulan. Directed by Nikki Caro and starring Yifei Lu and Donnie Yen. Lu plays Hua Mulan, a young woman in ancient China who dreams of becoming a warrior, but her family wishes she would just shut up and get married already. But before they can marry her off, the Empire comes under attack from Ruan warriors, and the Emperor declares every family must contribute one man to the army. This means Mulan's father, Hua Zhao, must pledge his service to the army since he has no sons. However, as he has a bum leg, he's basically just gonna be cannon fodder. Not wanting to condemn her father to death, Mulan disguises herself as a man and takes his place in the army. This is, of course, the latest in a recent string of live-action remakes of old animated films from the House of Mouse. Previous live-action remakes, in my opinion, have ranged from decent to mediocre. Although I say that with the caveat that I have not seen Kenneth Branagh's Cinderella. That's like the one I missed. Maybe it was the one good one, I don't know. One of these days I need to sit down and watch that. But anyway, for me, Mulan falls square in the mediocre category. It's just not all that great. I did not review this movie when it originally came out because I did not want to pay $30 to do so, and I'm glad I waited because, boy howdy, this was not worth 30 bucks. A lot has been said about this movie's depiction of Chinese culture. For example, the way this movie interprets the concept of qi. Now, I confess I do not know a whole lot about Chinese culture myself, but it is my understanding that qi is not the force. It is not some kind of magical thing that allows you to block swords with your bare hands. As I don't know much about Chinese culture myself, I will save most of that discussion for people who actually know what they're talking about. Uh, I did check out Walter Cha's review, and boy was he not a fan. Suffice to say, there's a reason why this movie did not do very well in China, where it actually did get a theatrical release. And I'd say a big part of that is while they had a pretty strong Asian cast, behind the camera was a whole lot of white people. Those white people apparently did not do very good research. Now, director Nikki Caro decided to not make this movie a musical, which I personally think is a mistake. I don't know about you, but I do not want to see a version of Mulan that does not include I'll Make a Man Out of You. They did include instrumental versions of some songs in the score, and you do hear bits of the lyrics and the dialogue, but... The only time you actually hear a full song from the original movie is in the credits, where you actually hear Mulan herself, Yifei Lu, sing the Mandarin version of the song Reflection. And to her credit, she is a very good singer for someone who hates democracy. And that just makes the decision all the more baffling. You have people in this movie who can sing. Why not just let them sing? Well, apparently, Nikki Caro did not want them to sing because she thought this would go against the realistic direction she had in mind for the movie. I'm sorry, what? In the live-action version of Mulan, the laws of gravity pretty closely resemble those you would find in a movie like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Which is to say, there are no laws of gravity. You have people leaping to ridiculous heights, kicking arrows out of the air, and literally running straight up and down sheer vertical surfaces. There is a character in this movie, a witch named Jean Yang, played by Li Gong, who turns into a fucking bird. So that was in line with your realistic direction for this movie, but a character randomly bursting into song, oh no, that was too far? I mean, it's one thing if you don't want to make the movie a musical, but at least don't come up with a bullshit reason for it, come on. And speaking of those gravity-defying moments, the action sequences are, I think, a bit hit and miss. Because of all the acrobatics, they can be fun to watch, but some of them are not shot or edited particularly well, especially Mulan's big fight at the end with Bori Khan, played by Jason Scott Lee, who is the leader of the Roran. And there's a lot of stuff in this movie that really does not make sense. When Mulan has her first fight with Zhan Yang, she ends up taking a throwing star right to the chest. However, as part of her disguise, she has a whole lot of wrapping around her chest to conceal her sex, and this ends up saving her life. So, what is the conclusion she draws from this moment? She sheds the wrapping and all of the armor and then heads off into battle without it. And I had to pause the movie for a few minutes because I could not believe what the hell I was seeing. Now, the point they're trying to make here is because Mulan is not being true to who she actually is, she cannot reach her full potential. So she has to shed her disguise and 
all of her armor, apparently, in order to reach her full strength. But here's the thing. Not being true to who she is literally just saved her life. Mixed messages here, movie. And even if she did need to stop disguising herself as a man to reach her full potential, you can do that without getting rid of all the armor. Just let your hair down or something. Don't be stupid. Another thing that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me was that damn phoenix. Uh, Eddie Murphy's dragon is not in the movie at all, and instead, Mulan has a phoenix that shows up every once in a while. I'm not sure why, because it doesn't actually do anything. It just appears every now and then to remind you that it's there, and that's about it. It does, however, contribute to one of the silliest shots in the movie. When Mulan is fighting Bori Khan at the end, there's a moment where the phoenix actually flies up behind her and dramatically spreads its wings to make Mulan look like a friggin' angel or something, and I just burst out laughing when that happened. That was so stupid. I could totally see it coming too, like, oh, here it comes, three, two, one, poster! And during the movie, Mulan, of course, encounters a whole lot of sexism, and one of the movie's main messages is, sexism is bad. Now, to be fair, to be fair, it's a good message, but very poor execution, very ham-fisted execution, no subtlety or nuance whatsoever. It's just, it's bad. We also see this sexism with Zhang Yang's subservience to Bori Khan, which... I really was not buying. You're telling me that this woman who can single-handedly wipe out an entire army, and in fact we see her doing so several times in the movie, cannot command this army on her own? Like, none of these people will follow a woman. Not at all. I'm pretty sure she could convince them if she tried. Just be like, hey, you follow me or you die. Oh, you refuse? Bang, you're dead. Anyone else? No? Good. Problem solved. Now, all that said, there is some good stuff going on here. The movie does have some very gorgeous scenery. The sets are designed well. Uh, the cast is pretty strong. You got Donnie Yen, Jason Scott Lee. Jet Li plays the Emperor, which is kind of awesome. Liu and Gong were both pretty good. Yosun An, who plays Mulan's fellow soldier slash love interest, did a pretty good job for what he was given. It was a bit weird to hear some people speaking with Chinese accents and others speaking with American accents. I really wish they would have picked one and sticked with it. And when the action scenes were done well, they were done really well. But overall, Mulan is just... meh. Yet another entry in a string of Disney live-action remakes where I just have to wonder what was even the point. Definitely not worth 30 bucks. I wouldn't even go so far as to say it's worth subscribing to Disney Plus just to watch it, but if you already have Disney Plus for some other reason, and you're looking for two hours to kill, I suppose you could do worse. But you could also do better, like watching the original, which is also on Disney Plus. And that's about all I have to say about Mulan. Till next time, take care.